The International Olympic Committee has a new set of rules for athletes taking part in this summer's Olympics in Tokyo. Go ahead and win yourself a gold, silver, or bronze, but don't you dare do anything but sing along quietly to your country's national anthem when you receive your 2020 Games hardware. An expanded Rule 50 released early January by the IOC specifically prohibits athletes from raising their fists or taking a knee during official medal ceremonies. Competitors are being told to keep their statements to themselves and only express political opinions afterwards in the media tent. First off, good luck with that. A number of athletes have already spoken out against the expanded Rule 50, including U.S. hammer thrower Gwen Berry, who raised a close fist during the 2019 Pan American Games after winning gold and who is a serious medal contender in Tokyo. Back in 1968, during the Summer Olympics in Mexico City, two African-American athletes, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, made defining statements that have become immortalized in modern history. There was no more iconic image from those games than their black power salute. And even though Smith and Carlos came home to abuse and death threats, they have now been recast as American heroes. So, Tokyo is going to have its hands full this summer. First, there are multiple athletes with good chances of earning medals who have already made podium statements. And there are plenty of other reasons the raising of the flags is probably going to get messy at the 2020 Games. China's Sun Yang could be competing in the pool for China pending another doping hearing. And anyone who follows the sport knows full well where the rest of the swimming community stands, or literally doesn't, when it comes to him and his questionable ethics. There's also U.S. fencer Race in Bowdoin, who took a knee during the same Pan American Games in Peru that Barry raised her fist at, noting he was protesting in part his dissatisfaction with American President Donald Trump. Then you've got Megan Rapinoe and the U.S. women's national soccer team, who played nice at the 2019 World Cup during their national anthems, but Rapinoe got into a pretty amazing round of trash talk with none other than Trump himself and has already spoken out publicly against the IOC and expanded Rule 50. She made it pretty clear she doesn't like to be censored or told what to do by anyone for that matter. In getting specific about what athletes can and cannot do, the IOC is just asking for trouble. And the chances of this backfiring are higher than the pole vault. Rule 50 used to be one vague, ambiguous sentence in the Olympic Charter now it's a three-page novel that tries to wax poetic about the neutrality of the games. Since when have the Olympics been a neutral venue? They most definitely weren't in Berlin in 1936, when Jesse Owens sent a middle finger to Hitler and the Nazi regime by winning four gold medals. The games were also definitely not neutral during the Munich massacre at the 1972 Summer Olympics, when 11 Israeli team members were taken hostage and killed by a Palestinian terrorist group. They most definitely were not in 1980 when the United States led a massive boycott of the Moscow Games, protesting the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan during the Cold War. Here in Hong Kong, to protest is to breathe. Citizens have taken to the streets for months on end, defying orders for the government and police, calling for reforms and autonomy from Chinese rule, raising fists in defiance of what they feel is an encroachment on their civil liberties. The very fabric of humanity is woven into the idea of free speech and freedom of expression. Nobody in their right mind thinks censoring people is the way forward when it comes to progressing together as fellow human beings. So why then should it be enforced when a national anthem is playing?